Status check to proceed with terminal count. Atlas systems propulsion. Go. Hydraulics. Go. Pneumatics. Go. LO2. Go. Water. Go. Centaur systems propulsion. Go. Pneumatics. Go. LO2. Go. LH2. Go. Hasgas. Go. Air electrical systems airborne. Go. Ground. Go. Facility. Go. RFFTS. Go. Flight control. Go. Instrumentation. Go. Com. Go. Timer. Go. GC cube. Go. Umbilicals. Go. ECS. Go. Redline monitor. Go. Quality. Go. OSM. Go. ULA safety officer. Go. Range weather and clear to proceed. Go. Launch director. Launch vehicle is ready to launch. Mission director. Yes, mission to launch. Proceeding with the count. Verify spacecraft on internal power. Spacecraft on internal power. T zero is planned for 2215 Zulu. Set count to start at 2211 Zulu. Roger. T zero is set for two two colon one five Zulu. Count will start at two two colon one one Zulu. This is Atlas Mission Control with T minus four minutes and holding. Polling is complete and the team has given the go for the launch of the MUOS one mission at five fifteen PM Eastern Standard Time. We will be picking up the countdown at T minus four minutes, about one minute and two seconds from now. From T-minus four minutes until launch, you'll be listening to the launch conductor and his team performing the final steps in the countdown. At T-minus three minutes, the team will secure Atlas LO2 topping. At T-minus two minutes, the team will transfer the Atlas and Centaur stages from ground facility power to internal battery power. Two seconds later, the team will secure Atlas battery heater power. At T-minus one minute, 55 seconds, the team will command the launch sequencer to start. At T-minus 1 minute 40 seconds, the team will command the flight control system to launch enable. At T-minus 40 seconds, the Centaur tanks will be stable at flight pressures. A final propellant status check is conducted at T-minus 25 seconds. At T-minus 3 seconds, the booster engine ignition starts and vehicle motion occurs at T-plus 1 second. This is Atlas Mission Control at T-minus four minutes and counting. The launch team was given the go to proceed and the countdown clock has resumed. Two topping. Atlas tanks to flight pressure. Two fifty. FTS internal. This is Atlas Mission Control at T minus two minutes forty one seconds and counting. The rocket, spacecraft, ground systems, range, and weather look good as we progress towards T zero at five fifteen PM Eastern Time. Once the rocket lifts off, it will take approximately 31 seconds to reach Mach 1, or the speed of sound. Vehicle internal. 155. Launch sequencer start. 150. Securing Centaur LH2. Securing Centaur LO2. 140. Launch enable. FTS armed.
120. Orca's armed. FCS count started. We do a CCS for launch. Roger. 110. And valves locked. Sixty seconds. Rock report range status. Range green. Forty. Stable at step three. ECS reduced for launch. Status check. Go, Alice. Go, Centaur. 20. 15. This is Atlas Mission Control at T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have ignition. And we have liftoff, liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket carrying the first mobile user objective system mission for the United States Navy. MUOS will significantly enhance communications for U.S. forces on the move. You're now hearing the voice of Morty Malinowski providing launch vehicle ascent data. Let's listen in for mission progress. Mark 1. Max Q, vehicle has begun throttling up right on schedule. Engine response looks good. SRB chamber pressures have plateaued, holding stable. Booster view is now in closed loop control. Engine response looks good. And the booster has begun its next throttle segment. Engine response looks good. Next event will be the SRB burnout. Chamber pressures continue to look good. And we're having SRB burnout. Signatures look good. And we've begun throttling back up right on time. And we have jettisoned solids one, two, three, four, and five. Looks like clean separation. And we've begun Q alpha limited steering. And begun a small roll for thermal constraints. Current altitude is 38 miles, downrange distance 50 miles, velocity is 4,771 4, miles per hour. Range track shows the vehicle making good progress right down the middle of the range. Coming up on our 2G throttle segment. And the booster has begun to throttle to maintain two and a half Gs. We have fired the RCS pyro valve and that system is now pressurizing the flight levels. Current altitude is 63 miles, downrange distance 131 miles, velocity is 7,284 miles per hour. Next event will be payload fairing jettison. And we have payload fairing jettison. Looks like good separation. And we have CFLR jettison. And vehicles begun throttling to uh, 
right on time as expected. Currently accelerating at 4.1 Gs. And we've begun throttling to maintain 4.6 Gs until BICO. Boost phase chill is underway. And boost phase chill is complete. And we have Biko. Engine shutdown looks good. We have retros and stage separation. Set looks clean. We have locks and fuel pre-start. GN2 purge burn is underway. We have ignition on the RL10 and full thrust. Engine signatures look good. Centaur steering has been enabled. And Centaur PU has been commanded to fixed angles for the early portion of this 7 minute and 41 second burn. This is Atlas Mission Control at L plus 5 minutes 11 seconds into the MUOS-1 mission. We've just heard Marty Malinowski report the successful execution of events comprising the early part of today's mission and all systems continue to operate normally. The mission is currently in the first of three Centaur engine burns. Our next event, the Centaur main engine cutoff, will occur in approximately seven minutes. I'm now joined by Commander Jeff King of the Navy's Communication Satellite Program Office. Commander King, thanks for joining me. Thanks, Don. It's a pleasure to be here for the inaugural launch of the MUOS satellite. Can, Commander King, can you uh, briefly explain MUOS and how it fits into our nation's space portfolio? Sure. The MUOS constellation was designed and will be operated by the U.S. Navy to support both the unified commands, the joint task force components, as well as the Department of Defense and non-DOD and allied agencies. MUOS provides global uh, communications to the warfighter in the UHF or ultra-high frequency spectrum. Can you uh, now briefly explain the uh, features and the uh, all the capabilities that MUOS has? Absolutely. MUOS supports a multi-service population of narrowband users. It's designed to support those users specifically looking for uh, mobility or comms on the move, as well as a higher data rate and higher operational availability. Uh, MUOS is going to provide approximately 10 times more system capacity than the current narrowband constellation, and it does so by bringing the latest mobile technologies such as simultaneous voice, video, and data, as well as improved services to the legacy users of the current system. The MUOS satellite will be in its geostationary orbit, about 22,000 miles above the Earth, and from that height it can see about one-third of the Earth's surface, and so from there, it uses its 14-meter reflecting mesh antenna to communicate with the users on the ground. Well, MUOS-1 is the first in the constellation. How many MUOS spacecraft will there eventually be in the constellation? Well, actually, there will be four satellites and a fifth satellite on orbit as a spare. Uh, this combined with the ground system, we've located strategically four different ground stations across the world, provide the worldwide coverage to the users. The, as the core of the MUO system, the ground stations are responsible for transporting the data as well as uh, managing the network and configuring and controlling the satellites. Well, Commander King, thanks for that information. And uh, now let's return to Marty Malinowski for more information about the mission in progress. And we are seeing Centaur roll to optimize telemetry coverage at this point. RL-10 continues to operate excellent. Chamber pressures are as expected for the set mixture ratio, and we continue to run oxidizer rich. And Centaur has completed its telemetry optimization roll. Body rates look good. And 
and the RCS line temperatures have equilibrated with the bottle temperatures. System performance looks very good.